and welcome to the latest edition of Business Insights, brought to you by Business South. My name is Kate Pearce and my background is in journalism and I work now in public relations. I've been asked by Business South to interview some of the leading names in business from the Central South region for this series. The aim is to hear from those leaders how they've navigated through the last year, through the pandemic, so we can understand more about the challenges they faced and the lessons they've learned. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Simon Palethorpe. He's president of Carnival UK, who run p and Cruises and Cunard from their headquarters in Southampton. Travel industry as a whole has been hard hit by the pandemic, but the cruise market has been truly rocked. Simon, it's been quite a year, hasn't it? It certainly has, Kate, and thank you for having me on your uh, programme here. Um, but yes, you're right, it's been, um, it's been quite a thing. Um, you know, albeit, you know, we have just recently announced that we're coming back to sailing when we've uh, just launched our summer staycations. I'm sure I'll get to speak about that a little later. Yes, definitely, definitely. But before, before we get to that, the good news side of it, I think, I mean, really, the last year has been, you know, there, there, are, there were no rule books for it. Nobody quite knew um, how, to, how to deal with it. I wonder if I can take you back, first of all, to uh, last March, um, when, um, you know, we, we were going into the first lockdown. Um, what were your feelings then? How did, how did you um, see that um, things were going to pan out for, for Carnival and, and uh, you know, for your staff in Southampton? Do, do you know what? We, we got hit a bit earlier than that. Um, we had ships sailing um, around Asia and Australia uh, back in February 2020. And, and as if you remember, around that time, um, places like, obviously China, but places like Singapore and Hong Kong were starting to become concerns. And so it was around then that we were sort of at, within the office, we were at emergency stations, um, rerouting ships to avoid those hotspots. And, you know, we did actually quite a good job of that. And we managed to avoid all those hotspots. Um, but it was quite something during February. Um, we, you know, for example, we took Queen Mary II and she was due to stop um, in Southeast Asia. And instead of stopping in Southeast Asia, we took her straight from Colombo um, um, in Sri Lanka and took her all the way down to Fremantle, Perth in Australia, completely avoiding Southeast Asia in order to avoid what we at that point didn't really understand, but had a, an inkling that it might be you know, risky for us. Um, and then from there, it was all about um, you know, could we continue to sail or not, which very quickly it became apparent we weren't going to be able to. And then it was all hands to the pump within the office to help us repatriate all of our guests from all of our ships to every four corners of, of the earth. So in, in fact, you know, as an industry, the cruise industry was well into it um, during February. And by, by March, we were, you know, then we were into almost a slightly different phase when it was all about getting our ships back to the UK. It was about getting crew home. Um, and, and actually, in fact, getting crew home was probably slightly trickier than getting our guests home when we had to, you know, we, we had to get people back to places like Philippines and the in, in India and Mauritius, where it was actually really tricky to get people into those countries at that point who were fearful of importing um, the virus. So that was a, you know, dur during that sort of uh, February, March area, it was really all hands to the pump in the office. Um, it was also obviously towards the end of March when we started having to work remotely. So, you know, our 1,300 people um, within our Southampton office having to, you know, quickly load up Zoom on their computers and uh, decamp to the home office. And uh, who would have known we'd still be here at this point? And the sheer logistics of that sound like, I mean, it makes my head hurt just thinking about it. But like you say, the, um, initially your thoughts were, you know, with, with your guests, getting them, you know, back home. But then, yes, with the crews, can you, can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, what went into uh, to getting them back, to, back safely as well? Well, you had, you, you had somewhere around, say, 8,000 crew, 8,000, 9,000 crew to get home. Um, and... You know, that, that was a case of, you know, huge teams of people booking flights, 
but booking aeroplanes as well. Um, but in a sense, the logistics wasn't always the hard part. The hard part was persuading some countries that we could bring their people, their, nat their nationals back into their country. That was, a that was actually the challenge. And you know, with, with, with one or two countries, we only succeeded in doing that right towards the end of 2020. I think the la very last crew member uh, flew home to Venezuela uh, in November 2020. So she'd been on our ships an awfully long time. That's amazing, isn't it? That is a long time, isn't it? I, I can promise you we looked, after, we looked after her very well indeed on board. I guess there are worse places to be, aren't there? So. She, she was very brave and she, she dealt with the situation very well, as did many of our other crew members who you know, were on for several months also. How difficult have you found it being a leader sort of through the through the pandemic? Because I think you had a promotion during the year, didn't you? And, and um, um, you know, people are looking to you for the answers, aren't they? I mean, there must have been moments when you're sort of like, oh, golly, you know, th this really is tough. Yeah, certainly getting a promotion within the middle of the pandemic was a, an interesting thing, particularly when when you when your business is not actually operating. It's got to be the strangest time. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been um, uh, it's been challenging to think about the best way to lead during um, during you know the, the current situation where you can't actually meet people. But in, in some senses, Zoom has been and you know and other video conferencing systems has been a, a, a huge asset as well. Um, so while while I would have loved to have been you know in the office and meeting people and spending time with people and having those informal conversations that are so difficult to find when you're you know, working remotely. Um, there have been some benefits. So for example, I'm probably more connected now with our team in Australia or in North America or in Germany or Japan than I've ever been. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of sitting there wondering how I'd never discovered this system for keeping in contact with people previously. So yeah, there, there've been some leadership challenge, but communicating with people has been, um, uh, has probably been easier than I thought. Um, the, uh, yeah, the, 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 quest, the question of how you keep people buoyed up through a period like this is, 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 a, is an interesting one. I, I don't think I've ever um, not been hopeful about our, future and so you know I, I think so long as you believe I think that that hopefully comes across um, so you know as a, as a business we've done a good job globally um, at raising quite a lot of money to see us through the pandemic as as well as um, cutting our costs quite heavily to make sure that we've got as much time as possible to you know to come out of this and you know we, we did a lot of that a lot of that was activity was undertaken very early on in the pandemic. And so I've always felt confident that we've had a sort of, if you want, a long runway, as we call it, out of this pandemic. So I've always felt optimistic in that sense. It's just been, a, just always been a question of, of when. And with, uh, talking of Zoom, I mean, you've used that for your messaging for, um, to keep your uh, customers and, and, and passengers in, in, informed, haven't you? I mean, is that a new way of uh, communicating with them? And is that something that you're gonna, gonna continue to use? Well, yeah, we've used video a lot actually um, to you know, announce, um, uh, make, make announcements throughout, throughout this period. And uh, I think that's gone down quite well. I mean, different people like digesting information in different ways and you know, our guests are no different. Um, so, you know, we're, we're starting to, Use video, you know, not cutting back on the written communications, but you know, giving them, you know, giving them information in lots of different forms so that they can digest it in the way that they uh, prefer. But the, the the feedback to the videos has actually been uh, really good. I, th I think they, I think people value the personal connection that it that it forms. And I mean, many of our guests sail with us time and time and time again. It's it, you know, there isn't a week that goes by when I I don't have letters from guests who've been sailing with us for 20, 30, even 40 years. Um, and, you know, they, they have a very personal connection with our brands. I mean, for, 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 many, for many of them, it's, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's their business. You know, I just happen to be the latest guy looking after it for them. Um, you know, and that's very much how they see it. And, and that's lovely. I wouldn't, have it, I wouldn't have it any other way. 
it's it's great to have that sort of personal buy-in isn't it it is and, yeah. and i guess people living in this area uh, are very used to seeing the the cruise ships as they pass through the solent and uh, you know on their way to and from southampton but where you've had many of your fleet anchored off uh, Dorset and Devon um, and there, there have even been boat tours I think going out to see ghost <laughs> ships haven't there I mean was that one of the hardest things for you to see? Look it, it's 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 dreadful to see our ships not um, sailing and not sailing with you know people having fabulous holidays so yeah we've had all of our ships you know mainly off, off of Weymouth or Babacom um, Bay and um yeah, it's it's, uh, it's 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 heartbreaking. I just can't wait to get them back sailing again and with people enjoying them as, as they should be. And what are what are the um, the things that you have to organise? I mean, obviously you've got a sort of a skeleton crew on board, I guess. Have you and and you're sort of keeping the the ships ticking over, I guess, are you until they're ready to go somewhere again? Yes, no, ab absolutely. I mean, you, there, there's you, you, we so we, we've got a um a reduced crew on board uh, and they're obviously looking after the ships from a sort of technical perspective making sure that they're clean and fresh ready ready to accept our guests back on board when the moment's right what what have you found has been the greatest uh challenge you touched on the the sort of financial side where you've been where um the organizer carnival as an organization has been raising money to keep afloat, literally, um, you know, what, what, what had there been any any sort of um, sleepless nights when you sort of thought, you know, goodness me, this is uh, really tough. Um, I, I don't think I've ever lost sight of us coming back to business and coming back to sailing and having guests back on board, and I, I think that's always been in my mind. But during the early days where we had to um, reduce our costs significantly, um, that was that was really hard. Um, so when, when you when you when you start uh, reducing the number of people employed in your business, and you know that that's 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 really difficult. Um, I mean, I, I would say that you know it was a a lot of people were involved in that effort, and um, I think we did it as sympathetically as it can be done. We've also maintained contact with many of the people who left the business, and you know as we've had sight to um, sailing again, we've actually been back in contact with some of them to say, well, if you're still available, we'd love to have you back sort of thing. And, and there have been people who've um, returned and that's been, that's been terrific to see. Um, but yeah, and, and, and also just seeing the, um, the, the impact on, you know, the local economy and so on. You, 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 you know, just in the sort of Southampton area, we've got about 170 different suppliers supplying us with, with things like, you know, it could be ice cream or cheese or, um, or chocolates for the, you know, for, for, for our restaurants, um, or, you know, oils and lubricants for the ships, um, flowers, uh, taxi services, you know, there's, there's a whole supply chain that depends upon the cruise industry in and around Southampton. And, you know, so you, you, you see the impact on all of those businesses. And, you know, I, I do see it. And I've, I've looked at, you know, how much we're spending with these different companies one year to the next, 2019 to 2020. And you know that many of these businesses will be really hurting. So, you know, you, you see all of that and you think, wow, that's um, that, that, that's quite, quite some impact, not just on Carnival UK, but on, you know, the whole local economy and further afield. And it, it is the ripples out, isn't it, that I think will be felt for, for quite some time. And even with your um, your um, headquarters there, I mean, normally you'd have, you know, you were saying a thousand plus people coming in and out. So they're going out to lunch and, you know, that, that sort of uh, thing as well, isn't there? So that it's, it has, has been a massive impact, hasn't it? Yes, no, I mean, you, you, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. I mean, day in, day out, we'd normally have somewhere around a thousand people in, in the office and and as you say they'd be going out and they'd be buying coffees they'd be buying lunch or going out to lunch and um and and you know what one can only think that that's having quite a quite a significant impact on some of the local establishments so yeah absolutely through the um through the past year has there been anybody who has particularly inspired you who you've seen I don't know whether it be another business leader who you think, well, you, you know, yes, they seem to have got things right or or somebody within your own organisation that, you you know, has, has made you think, um, yeah, they, they are a really inspiring person. 
Do you know what? I, I'm not sure I'd pick out a single individual. I, I would say, um, I would say that, that the Carnival UK team as a whole has been pretty inspiring. I mean, the way the way in which the team rallied in the early days to um, you know really look after our guests in a very very genuine way, look after every last individual, despite us having you know ten thousand plus people. I've got to say, remembering back, I've got to say it was around 20,000 people, every corner of the world, to get back to every corner of the world. Um, and But the way in which it was done, it was, you know, it, that was truly inspirational. The way in which we then looked after the crew in order to get the crew back and the way that the crew behaved and um, and managed, the situ managed their way through the situation was, again, inspirational. So... You know, I, I've got, I've got to, I've got to give it to the team. They, they definitely were a bit of an inspiration. And even though it's been um, a really tough time um, in business, have there, have there been some positives? I mean, you've talked on the sort of communication side. Um, you know, with being able to reach out to literally all the four corners of the earth. But um, you know, are there, are there other things that you see as a positive that have, have come out of the present situation? I think. You know, I, I, th I think it's probably in the moment quite difficult to see, but I think once we get beyond the pandemic and once we're back sailing again and we've got guests on board, I think many of us in the business will look back and um, think about all the things that we did and how different they were from our normal operations. And we'll think back and think, one, wow, didn't we achieve a lot? And two, didn't we learn an awful lot? learned how to work with all sorts of different parts of the business, learned how to do different things, um, learned how to be resilient in the face of adversity. So, you know, they, 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 they may not feel like necessarily great positives in the moment, um, but I think we all will look back and we'll sort of say, well, hang on, you know, I learned more in that year or year and a bit than I did in the previous three to five years. So I, I, think, I think there will be lots of positives albeit it's sometimes quite difficult to see them in the moment. And generally you are feeling more positive because we are looking at um, having cruises <coughs> around uh, Britain for British people to, to go on those cruise ships. That, that must fill you with joy, just the, the thought of that. Yeah, it really does. Um, and, you know, they, they've been selling phenomenally well. So we launched... Um, we launched p and Cruises uh, last week on last Monday, um, and we're going out, first of all, with Britannia, our UK flagship, um, and then we'll be going out with Iona, which is going to be her maiden voyage um, in, um, in August. Um, also on the Cunard side, we've got uh, Queen Elizabeth going out um, on the 19th of July, and so that's all very exciting. So, um, and her, her, she's, she's not on sale yet, but she'll be on sale um, uh, tomorrow, actually. Um, so yeah, no, it's um, it's it's really it's just fantastic to have um, some sailing to actually focus on. So we're really excited about that. Also, the other thing is, um, you know, I'm quite optimistic for those voyages, just because it's sounding increasingly as if travel this summer is going to be hard, and therefore they just provide a one. You don't need to fly. You don't need a passport. You know, it's it's it's. Um, um, it, it's just a, a wonderful opportunity to get away in a world where I think we've all been starved of breaks. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm, I'm I'm very excited for them, and I, and I think they'll I think they'll be a great break for many of our guests. And, and it, it, again, it'll be fantastic to see those ships coming by, won't it? I mean, there'll be uh, it'll be quite something to see them, won't it? I can't wait to get on. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be on the, I'll be on the gangway. I can promise you. Where, which one are you going on? Which one? All three. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not joking. I'll, I'll be on Britannia on the, on the twenty seventh, twenty seventh of June. I'll be on Queen Elizabeth on the nineteenth of July, and then I'll be on, um, I'll be on Iona on the seventh of August. So absolutely. I hope you've got your sea legs ready. <laughs> yeah, never suffered, never suffered too badly from okay. that, thankfully. <laughs> Just as well, isn't it? And has your has your um, leadership style had to change during during the past year? You know, because of the fact you're dealing with people remotely. Have you have you felt that your style has changed in any way? Um, not not 
really. I mean, I think I think um, um, I, I, I don't I don't think the fundamentals of of how I lead have changed. Um, I think that the 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 frequency with which one has to communicate and be proactive about actively leading has has probably changed. I think the cadence has changed. Um, when when you're in the office, you you know you're constantly walking around and you're touching upon people, talking with people, seeing people, um, and so you know th there's a certain amount of um, leadership that comes quite naturally from being together with people and in the in the same environment. Whereas um, whereas when you, when you're remote and Zoom can be you know one of the downsides is it can be a bit transactional. Um, it's you don't you don't really organise a Zoom to say hi. You organise a Zoom because you've got some business to do, and so I think I think I think that you know I've had to make probably more of an effort to communicate um, than would be in my sort of normal daily life where I back in the office. So probably less stylistically and more a uh, more stylistically a change and more a volume type of change. If that makes sense. And bringing the ships um, back into action, um, I with, 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 are you bringing the crews back then from the Philippines and and um, those areas of the world, or are you using you know people closer to closer to Britain? How how is all of that working? No, it's 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 both. So I mean, many many of our seafarers are British, and so you know obviously they'll be coming back on board, and that's the logistically the easiest bit of what we've got to do. Um, but yeah, no, we've got the. The, the challenge that I described earlier um, of getting people back to the Philippines and India and Mauritius and Venezuela, um, we've now got exactly in reverse. So we're now going through all of the processes of getting them to get visas and medical certificates and, um, and flights and all the rest of it, then getting them back to our ships, going through multiple rounds of testing for COVID to make sure we don't bring COVID onto any of our ships. Um, and then putting them through a quarantine on the ships before, you know, allowing them to get down to um, down to their work. So yeah, it, it's it is quite a it's quite a logistical exercise, and it's, it's partly why it takes us um, around twelve weeks to go from saying, "Yep, we want to bring a ship back," um, and actually having it ready to accept guests on board again. And I guess as well, it, it, where you were talking about the the local suppliers for your produce. I mean, it's it's them sort of building up again, isn't it? On that, of course, um, that local scale. Yes. No. I mean, you know, so it, the the crew is probably the piece that vexes me the most because that's that is complicated and it involves people from all around the world. Um, but you're absolutely right. Stores and provision and beverages and you know, it's it's a uh, it's 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 huge. Um, you know, as, as well as making sure that the ships are absolutely ready to go, making sure that the entertainers have rehearsed and, uh, you know, ready to go. And, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's you know, it's a, it's a big thing to, to undertake. So I guess that's the main thing that you're looking forward to this year. And when do, are, are you sort of um, looking further? I mean, I guess you will, will be looking further ahead, but when when do you foresee that, um, you know, you can start to look to have cruises going further afield. Yeah, it's an interesting question. The, the, gov the government has what it's called the Global Travel Task Force, and that's going to talk more generally about the travel industry and international travel specifically. Um, and that is due to report out um, on the 12th of April, with Boris Johnson saying a few things in the week before. Uh, so we're, we're obviously absolutely waiting for that because um you know assuming we get wrapped up with the broader travel industry in that announcement then that will be key for when we can go to ports um, abroad and you know we know that many of our guests while they'll love our staycations and they'll love sailing around the british isles you know many of them would like also to um go a little further afield so um that 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 date of april the 12th is is rather key for us at the moment. I know, um, finally, 
during last year it was it was the 180th anniversary wasn't it and that sort of got a got lost really didn't it are there any any elements of that that you can you can sort of pick up and and um get us all excited about again I'm, I'm sure we'll find I'm sure we'll find ways to celebrate that nonetheless um but we do also we have actually just for Cunard we've just launched um um, her round world voyages for 2023 and that's exactly a hundred years on from the first round world voyages uh, which uh, which we think is very exciting and seems seems to have captured the imagination um, of our guests being such being such heritage brands and both brands having been going now for over 180 years we're never we're never short of something to uh, celebrate or an anniversary to commemorate and looking forward to the next hundred years I guess Hundred percent, yes. I'm looking forward to some new ships. We've, we, you know, we're we're, we're going to be welcoming um, Iona, which is our first LNG-powered ship, um, into Southampton in the coming months, and she'll be taking guests on board from August. We've got a second LNG-powered ship coming into the business in 2022 for P&O Cruises, and then Cunard's got its first new ship in 13 years, joining the fleet in 2023. So. There's an awful lot for us to look forward to. And is it that greener, cleaner cruising that um, that you're personally interested in in developing further? Because obviously there are concerns, aren't there, about um, <clears throat> the effect on on the environment? Yeah. So we've 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 been making huge strides, of, not not even just recently, since you know, since sort of twenty years back, um, in terms of developing. Um, better, te better, cleaner technologies for cruise ships, altering our itineraries so that we burn less fuel in the first place. Um, so, you know, huge strides have been made and will be made. We continue to invest a lot of money in R&D to make our ships um, ever, ever cleaner. But um, the LNG ships um, and, you know, Iona, the P&O cruise ship, is the first LNG ship of her scale for the UK market. Um, you know, is, is a huge step forward. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Simon, for uh, for joining me this morning. And um, I hope you enjoy your cruising this summer. Well, we look forward to having you on board sometime. Oh, oh I'll take that as an invite. Yes, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed.